Hello and welcome back Alaska. Michael Ives here with your Saturday sports. Well, this weekend in sports has gone to the dogs, literally. And we start with the athletes and their mushers of the 31st running of the Yukon Quest. 18 racers and their teams departed from 2nd Avenue in downtown Fairbanks today to kick off the 1,000 mile Yukon Quest. With a large crowd on hand, the excitement of the journey ahead could be felt from mushers, dogs, and fans alike. The initial leg of the race will take them 73 miles to the Two Rivers checkpoint. Norman Casavant would be the first out of the starting gate as the trek towards the $22,000 title purse begins. He pumps up the crowd and takes off down the chute. Then Eureka, Alaska's Brent Sass, last year's third place finisher and three-time Quest Sportsmanship Award winner, gives a smooch to his lead dogs, and they're off. Love is love, man. Defending Quest champion Alan Moore would take off in the number eight bib, and quickly the whole field was headed down the trails. Moore won last year's shortened course by finishing in eight days, 19 hours, and 39 minutes. From this downtown start, it will take the teams about 8 to 13 hours to hit the Two Rivers stop. And Moore says it's time to see how ready for this extreme journey they really are. All the preparation and everything that's been taking place the last four or five months uh, comes to a head now. So it's kind of exciting to get out on the trail and see uh, how training went for us because we'll know shortly. With the Quest Mushers off and pushing, we turn to another group of athletes looking to not get left behind the pack. Alaska Nanook Hockey hosts the WCHA's last place team, the Alabama Huntsville Chargers, at the Carlson Center this weekend. And the Nanooks got a huge win in Game 1 of the series last night as they look to resurrect themselves from the bottom of the WCHA and into some prime playoff position. Alaska jumps on the visiting Chargers early as junior Jared Larson buries a backhander glove side on Chargers keeper Matt LaRose. And the student section gets hyped just in time for a second tally as first liner Marcus Basara deposits a Cody Kunick feed for a 2-0 Nanook lead. The Chargers finally find some juice and make it 2-1 heading into the second period of play. However, from there on out, it was all Nanooks. Jared Linnell with the effort in front of the net, and he gets his first career goal as a Nanook, making it 3-1 to one in the second. Congrats to the North Pole kid. Garrick Perry gets in on the scoring with a redirect past LaRose, and it's a two-goal Nanook lead. Then Tyler Morley finds defensiveman Colton Pareko, who just rifles one from about 10 feet out that blows past LaRose's glove. 5-1 Alaska, and they would add a final goal by the captain, senior Colton Beck, for a 6-1 win and two more points in the WCHA standings. The Nanooks are now tied for seventh in the conference with a chance to move all the way up to fifth pending tonight's contests. Alaska hosts the Chargers for the second game of this weekend set tonight at the Carlson Center. Now along with some great local hockey, we have a special treat in the interior this week as Hockey Week in Fairbanks showcases the sport to our community. The traveling exhibition drew crowds at the Carlson Center as fans were able to see memorabilia from some of hockey's greatest athletes. The display includes, includes some prized NHL trophies like the Norris Trophy, awarded to the NHL's top defenseman, and the Calder Trophy, handed out to the NHL's Rookie of the Year. You can also try your hand at hockey-themed games like the Puck Control Platform and the Slapshot Speed and Accuracy Booth. The showcase will be available for, view, for viewing again tonight at the Carlson Center and will move to the Big Dipper for Ice Dogs action next weekend. Now, Hockey Week continues through Sunday, February the 7th, with many diverse events, games, and viewings. For a full schedule of the Hockey Week activities, you can go to HockeyWeekInFairbanks.com. Now, you can call me a nerd, or maybe I'm just a child of the Bill Nye generation, but the science behind sports has always been fascinating to me. With the Sochi Winter Olympics opening ceremonies less than a week away, we're going to begin a series called Science of the Olympics to see if science truly does rule. For round one, we look at something Alaskans know pretty well. Snow. It's the hard-packed launching pad for snowboarders. The slick racing track of cross-country athletes and the speedy slope for downhill skiers. The snow conditions are huge. You know, some races you'll have really icy conditions, some races are soft. 
the science of snow, how it's formed and how it reacts, has been studied by scientists for centuries and continues to this day. Snow is the crystallized form, the solid form of water, but that is formed in the atmosphere so that it is able to take on a unique crystal structure. Snow is a form of precipitation that begins as tiny liquid water droplets in the clouds. As they accrete and freeze, they'll grow outwards in that pattern. Snowflakes come in many different shapes and sizes. The, the stereotypical snowflake that we're used to, those beautiful six-fold symmetric crystals, oh, those are called dendrites. The size and shape of snowflakes is determined by two important variables humidity and temperature. Dendrites form under conditions where you have a lot of water vapor. If you have less water vapor, you get much simpler shapes, like small plates, small columns. Though tiny, soft, and delicate, snow becomes the ultimate playing surface upon which Olympic dreams are made. KTV KTVF will be bringing you more on the Olympic science in action as we prepare for and get into the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics. You can also find the full collection of science and engineering of the 2014 Olympic Winter Games, stories right on NBCLearn.com and Science360.gov. And we would be amiss not to mention the Super Bowl coming up tomorrow. This matchup features the NFL's top defense in the Seattle Seahawks against the best offense in the league, the Denver Broncos. Who's going to be this year's champion? I'll let you pick. For more KTVF sports, you can log on to Twitter, YouTube, WebCenter11.com, or download our mobile app. Keep on keeping on, Alaska. Holly Seiler is up next with your full weather forecast. And enjoy the Super Bowl tomorrow, and we'll see you right back here on Monday with the full weekend sports recap with my man, Joe Cook. Have a good one, everyone.